Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. It is January the 12th and uh, really not a whole lot has been going on around here. We are having some really cold weather this winter. Last couple of days and then on top of that just a lot of rain, non-stop rain. So I haven't got a lot done around here. Uh, well, we've still been working, but uh, just haven't done anything that's uh, YouTube worthy. So, um, got the camera back out today. We're going to be working in the shop, back on the planters. Uh, finally got the gaskets that I needed uh, to go on the precision. Uh, it, it, it goes around the precision uh, seed plates, a little gasket that seals that. So I will be putting those on, and uh, other than that, we'll just be changing more filters, uh, doing the hydraulic yearly changes on some tractors. But um, anyway, guys, glad to have y'all back. Welcome back to Triple R Farms. My name is Daniel, and let's get after it. Okay, uh, before I go work on the planter, I'm gonna go check one thing. Uh, the running theme on the farm this year, this winter, is batteries. Seems like everything we try to crank up has a dead battery. Uh, usually have that in the winter anyway, but this year it's like every piece of equipment. Something's going wrong. Had the rogator mechanic come because my rogator won't crank. I'm just gonna let that run it cranked up fine uh, what he found out the mechanic is there's something that's mounted on here that is association with ag leader where uh, basically they can look at my screens and see if there's any codes popping up or they can anyway communicate with this machine wirelessly uh, from their parts stores or dealerships and apparently they've had trouble with that and what Agco told them to do was disconnect that because I don't use it. So the mechanic disconnected it and uh, it was drawing power down. So he disconnected it and he wanted me to try it this morning to see how it cranked and uh, cranked up good. So I'll keep checking it the next couple of days to see if it keeps cranking okay but hopefully that solved it because I will be putting out liquid fertilizer on that wheat as soon as it dries up. I mean it should have been done last week but we just didn't get to it. Now we've had wet weather, wet weather, wet weather. So as soon as it dries up this this baby will be running in the field fertilizing wheat. So had to make sure it's ready to go. Well look at here another battery issue. Got to get a uh, do a complete oil change on the case 120. Uh, we were going ahead and doing the hydraulic and the air anyway, and uh, it just happened to be hitting on an oil change. So uh, we'll do a complete oil, fuel, hydraulic, and air. I need a oil, fuel. and I already got the hydraulic down there so I'll take this to James and he'll get on it all right now let's get on the planters
gonna take a look at the uh, 340. That's gonna be the next tractor we change hydraulic filters and see if it needs an oil change too. Look at the hours. Whoo! It is cold today, boys. Jeez. Forty-one eighty-two, and the next oil change is at forty-four hundred. So this will just be hydraulics and air. All right, it is another cold morning here at Triple R Farms. Um, I'll probably try to crank that again today uh, to make sure the batteries are still charged up and they haven't drained down, make sure that issue is fixed. Uh, another big thing is late yesterday afternoon, I moved our case combine 8250 into the shop. Uh, left it in there overnight so it'd be warm and I uh, got a big oil change on it. Oil, hydraulic, air filters, everything, complete change. So uh, James is gonna be working on that with Mark. So that's a big job. So, um, and I got a belt to fix on that combine. So that is what we're doing. And I think the sun is gonna come out cause I've seen some blue sky. So that'll be the first time the sun has come out, I swear, in like two weeks. So. Let's go see what we can get done. They're okay. That's that return chopper. Yeah, you probably just slip it right on. No, that, that you got you got to get over this. So that belt turns that fan on the outside of that blower. Okay. Well, look, the hardest thing is you've got to get this belt off, and it's going to take a. 18 millimeter. It, boy, if you had a ratchet one, or maybe a three quarter would do it. A ratchet type wrench. Yeah. And I'll loosen this. Then you can get that belt over that, and then then it's just slip on after that. I had to get my instructions from Dad on how to how to fix it. All right, I need 18 millimeter. Look at there. That's John Deere too. All right, got the belt on. I don't know why that little belt broke, but um, we we're moving it a couple of, uh, we we're moving around a couple of weeks ago, it, it broke, but for some reason, that belt right there, that little one. I don't know if it was dry rotted or, it broke for some reason, but it is fixed now. All right, we had to change the plans. Uh, 
sun came out and that's when dad immediately wants to change and get outside so we'll be doing some work outside today uh, this is our bulldozer trailer low boy uh, as you can tell it's not brand new but um, it does the job we pull it with our tractors uh, I, I couldn't remember what kind of hitch was on the on the tongue so now I know that we need a clevis on the tractor tongue to pull it but this is what we pulled our bulldozer with uh, we've always done it this way so we'll keep doing it and this is what we'll be loading on that trailer this is our bulldozer as you can tell again it is not a new one um, don't know what model this is or year model I don't even know what brand it is but it was probably bought before I was born and we've had it on the farm ever since but it has been a good bulldozer the thing will just will not die the motor cranks up every time so that is why it's still on the farm but it works so we keep using it what we're going to be doing with it today is uh where we've been taking up the fence on some of the videos you saw earlier uh we were taking up a fence that we didn't need anymore and uh we're just going to take this dozer and pull up the concrete poles uh like corner posts that were concreted in the ground pull them up with that and then we'll level off uh the dirt where the fence was we'll get it good and smooth because it's right beside the road so we'll just scrape it off and level it off good so that is what we'll be doing with it close all right now i'll be taking the 340 to go hook up to the bulldozer trailer and get it loaded got to turn the heated seats on
sun. But that's what we use for like our pull barbed wire with. Uh, we'll have those con those poles concreted in every so often, and that is what we'll be pulling up. Uh, that's the only thing left on that fence. We've got all the barbed wire up. We've got all the fence posts. Now we're pulling up those corner. I call them corner posts, whatever metal, metal concreted in posts. And uh, James and them will be pulling those up. There goes Josh, a load of hay. All right, before I do the go work on and pull up the fence post, uh, got to move my combine out of the shop where James was through with it. And I had to move the cotton picker out of the shed. And guess what? Battery dead again. Now we got it cranked, uh, Dad decided we're going to change what equipment is in here first. So he wants the cotton picker in here first, then the combine. So we are going to do some rearranging. Got to move some uh, totes with the Nissan forklift right there. Anyway, just watch, you'll see. There's the elusive shop cat. Kitty, 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 kitty. That's gonna be it, guys. Finally had a beautiful day. Sun came out three-fourths of the day. Still a little on the chilly side, but that sunshine made it all better. But that's all, folks. I uh, really appreciate y'all watching the videos. And uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And I will see you on the next one.